Hello everyone, Elise Quevedo here and welcome to Hall 1 at Mobile World Congress Barcelona. I'm standing at Huawei's booth, which is actually the largest of this Congress. And when I was doing one of the booth tours a couple of days ago, one of the areas that stood out for me was emergency management services provided by Chinese tech giant Huawei. And to find out a little bit more, today I am joined by Mr. Hong Eng Ko. Mr. Hong Eng, thank you so much for having thank me you. today. Thank you, Alice. So one of the things that I enjoyed the other day was emergency management solutions. Can you please tell us a little bit more about what this entails? Sure. Firstly, Alice, again, thanks for coming to here to, to find out more about the solution. We are actually part of the global public sector team. We have been doing uh, businesses with governments in more than 100 countries. So other than emergency management, we have the digital government, we have education and healthcare. In terms of emergency management, I think it's very critical because for any a city to be prosperous. Of course, you want to make sure everyone is safe. We bring societal values to everyone, right? Okay, so now could you give us a few real case studies of how emergency management services are being implemented today? Sure. So we do have a few demonstrations here. So as I go along, I'll probably share with you some of the stories. So firstly, over here is actually showing how a typical city looks like. I'm not going to go through all the technical stuff of the backbone broadband network and so on. But as part of emergency management, uh, we have uh, many different features such as perimeter protection. It could be critical infrastructure protection and so on and so forth. So if you look at this fencing here, it's actually wired with fiber optics, right? So imagine if there's an intrusion. You see, it's red color. And this is how it, it looks like, right? But very often, maybe that could be due to animals uh, and not human. Just, as, just like this little squirrel here. So if it's a squirrel, if it's a squirrel, it's green. It's green, right? Then how do we achieve this is the technology behind. So we actually uh, created a, a, a product that is based on AI uh, and inside we measure how the light is transverse in 32 different ways and that precisely tell us where is the disturbance and not only that, whether it's a big object like vehicle or human or a smaller object like animals. Thank you. What other examples can you tell us in regards to emergency management? Sure. So please come along with me to other uh, solution. So if you look at here, uh, this is about converge command and control. What exactly is converge command control? So for example, this is very common. It's a day-to-day -day affair, right? Whether there's a fire, there's a, a, a crime case, or there's an accident, there's an ambulance case. And in many countries, they still have multiple numbers. Of course, the European Union did it right. You have 112, right? So, but unfortunately, many countries, they still have different uh, systems, uh, different numbers. So in Huawei, what we do is basically we converge them just a European 112. So you only need to dial one number. Now, the, that is the easy part because after that, there will be many systems behind this to be converged and behind it involves different blue light services, whether it's police, fire or ambulance and so on. And to achieve this, actually Huawei has a solution called Integrated Communication Platform to pull this together. And this has been used in actually many countries. We've deployed this in Saudi to, to protect the people during Mecca, uh, Hajj and so on. It's used in Cote d'Ivoire is used in uh, Kenya. We actually have quite a few, but all these are authorized uh, that I can share with you some of this solution. Now, the other aspect, of course, is the actual dispatch. So once you receive the emergency number, uh, traditionally, you use uh, uh, many agencies around the world. They are still using old technology based on 2G technology, but that's only good for voice. So 2G technology, you have things such as Tetra standards or P25 standard, but that is only voice, which is insufficient. And you also don't know exactly where the resources, where's the police uh, and whether the fire engine is on service or, or ambulance is out uh, attending to case and so on. So basically in Huawei solution, we use the latest technology, which is a 4G based. And the 4G based solution comes in different format. So for example, this is one of them. This is one of them. This is actually a full-fledged uh, ruggedized device that the police or fire and uh, 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 ambulance can use. You want to take a look? Sure. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was on purpose. Just to show you how ruggedized it is, right? And you can actually use application. It's Android-based. And of course, you can uh, send video as well. But you can do push to talk. So try to listen carefully. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Hello, Alice. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yep. Wow, okay. Now, 
Is it what interesting? Is the, range? the range. Oh, it based on your uh, uh, this base station. It could be uh, four or five kilometers, depending on the spectrum and so on and so forth. But what is interesting is that this uh, body worn camera. This is a body worn camera. It's basically to record. So even in Singapore, Singapore Civil Defense Force is also recording it. It's not only for evidence and so on. But Huawei solution is more than the traditional body worn camera. This comes with real time streaming. And just now when I was testing the push to talk feature, yeah. you notice the voice come out from here. I can actually do I can actually do push to talk here. It can be vice versa. It's the first time that we actually have a body worn camera that is also a voice device. We are helping customers to save money rather than multiple devices. Of course, some officers will need the bigger device, right? So you can do many things, including sending video. So I can send video. You can see the screen there. So when you're out there, you can send video. So these are all the latest technology that Huawei has that makes it easier. You can have the in-vehicle unit and so on. And the vehicle unit, actually, the, uh, the in-vehicle unit, if I may just go back and emphasize this, the ambulance, right? It's important. So in Egypt, in Egypt, the ambulance has this inside. So your vital signs that your heartbeat, your oxygen level, everything is transmitted to the hospital through the same technology before you arrive in the hospital, right? And this solution has been used in, uh, as I said, already those uh, countries and so on. But for the this device, because usually command control and this uh, multimedia critical communication, we have different customers uh, around the world. And if I may just uh, go on to the other thing that I want to show you, which is this. Because during a major event, major crisis, you need different agencies to work together. But usually they are using normal phone call and, and so on and so forth. So Huawei Solution, we actually pull everyone together where it's a collaborative platform, where it's not just video, you can share document and all these things. So this is important for agencies uh, to uh, uh, work together. Last but not least, typically in the command center, you have lots of information coming in. So that's not very easy for the commander, uh, especially even for post-event analysis. So basically, we have a dashboard with the video, with the statistics and so on and so forth, many things. Now, one last item I want to show you. We already showed, showed this just now, but let me go to a scenario when there's a major crisis, major disaster. We're out in the mountain, there's no connectivity. There's no connectivity. So what we do is basically we can send the mobile radio antenna, not fixed mobile radio antenna and once you arrive there we even have a rapid version this rapid version can be set up by three strong persons man or lady and it can actually cover a few kilometers this was you during the missing of the 13 boys in thailand remember a few years yes, ago up in right. the mountain there was no coverage so huawei brought this up to provide the coverage for them to continue with the operation and Again, this one, Rapid, has been used in many incidents around the world during crisis that it has helped. I love the way that you've explained real-life case studies of how emergency management services can work. So my last question for you, Hong Yang, is what can we expect from emergency management services as an elevated technology over the next few years? Okay, I think the next few years, things will get even more uh, advanced. After all, we are not just talking about computerization, we are talking about digital transformation. So for example, this is already happening in this uh, European Union. European Union, you have an e call 112 system. What it means is that vehicles in European Union must come with sensor. So if the vehicle get into accident, you automatically call the command center without the human in case you are unconscious, right, with the location. And Huawei solution, the integrated communication platform, is actually already ready for e call 112, the data. So meaning the transaction is actually done even without the human. And of course, in emergency management, we will try to move into predictive. Can you prevent a fire rather than fight a fire? Can you predict a crime rather than, than fight a crime or, or even prevent a crime? So a lot of data is coming in, sensors are coming in, and that should be helpful to make the world a safer place. Thank you so much for spending time with me, explaining me more of what management services are all about. And there you have it, guys, discovering how technology and innovation can help brands such as Huawei continue helping businesses be safer, more efficient and more productive. This is Elise Quevedo. Until next time. Thank you.